episode 47 of Multiplaying is brought to you by BioWare Mythic. It is? Oh, it's not? Oh. God damn it. Let me get back to you on that. Everybody online looking good. A companion podcast to the collaborative blog and gaming community that's playing as life allows. This is Multiplaying. Well, let's start the insanity. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Hello? Uh... Great heavens! What kind of radio show is this? Well, hello, everybody. This is Multiplaying. Uh, let see. Tonight, we got Jason. Hello. Dean. Hey! And myself, Steve. Uh, we'll also have another special guest later on in the show, uh, Andy Belford from BioWare Mythic. Uh, joined us for an interview, and after we get through what we've been playing and drinking, uh, we'll get to that interview. Uh, but until then, what have you been drinking, Jason? Um, right now, I have a Bel Air Brown from Short Brewery. It's not what you started with. No, it is not what I started with, but it's what I'm drinking now, so shut up. <laughs> you don't want to talk about what Everybody you were Everybody knows what I started with, all right? <laughs> don't Game say, day, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Man, <laughs> I need help. Like, you really? need to get off that shit. <laughs> I don't. I can't quit it. It's so terrible, too. I was talking to Steve, and I was like, this is awful. <laughs> Why am I drinking this? <laughs> Why am I doing this to myself every <laughs> week? <laughs> what, are you, what are you drinking, Dean? Um, I'm having another Pyramid uh, Hefeweizen. Yeah. All right. Drink My favorite. 7-Eleven oh, yeah. makes that, right? <laughs> no, but Pyramid Brewing Company here in the Northwest makes it. Well, is it a great value? Actually, it was because it was like twelve bucks for a twelve pack this week. It's a great value. <laughs> it's an insane value. Pyramid of savings. Uh, <laughs> I have just got an energy drink. That's all I got. Nothing. Is it? Too- is it Rockstar? No, I'm not. I'm not a winner this week. Oh. I'm just a monster. So, okay. it's scary. Uh, but let's go through what we've been playing. Uh, Jason, what you've been playing the past week or so? Uh, playing a lot of War, which. We'll probably hear people will probably hear about pretty soon. Um, yeah, we probably won't talk about war too yeah, much. No, well, um, some Fallout New Vegas. Oh yeah, perhaps you've heard of it. I have heard of it. Yeah, it I, is awesome. I I am really loving it. I I haven't experienced. I mean, the first thing we could probably got to probably address is our experience with the bugs, which I mm. haven't really had any so far. No, well, neither have I. And it's funny because like I, as soon as I logged in on Steam to play it for the first night, Blameful Gecko. Um, sent me a message like, God, you got to tell me if you crash in Prim, because I'm just crashing in Prim like crazy. I want to know if it's just me or it's a game. And he like gave me his personal email and everything. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not crashing in Prim. Uh, I have I have been through Prim. I have not crashed in Prim as well. So, Is that a city? It's like the fir- outside of like the first area that you start in. It's If you decide to go that route, which if, this, if you follow the storyline at all, that's the first place that you come across. And yeah, the people I, there's there's been reports of weird, crazy damn bugs in the game, and there's, some of them are actual visual bugs, like the guy that's the head that turns like total 360, like <laughs> as you're talking to him. Uh, it's bizarre, and yeah, it's I have not experienced any bugs with the game so far, and I I wasn't sure were any of the bugs that were being displayed more on the console versions. It, yeah, I've been listening to a couple of podcasts. Like I was listening, listening to uh, We Can Confirmed and stuff, and it sounds like pe- more people are experiencing bugs on the consoles than the PC. But Ooh. I don't know. Hmm. I, you know, I, I'm sure there's a lot of people playing PC who are experiencing bugs. I mean, yeah. the first Fallout Three was really buggy. So I don't was know. it for you? It, I couldn't alt tab in it unless I set it to um, not full screen. Like every uh, time, and this one I can alt tab in and out just flawlessly. Hmm. But I, I don't know. I mean, you can see this game. All those games are, are you know, Oblivion and all, are were pretty buggy. I had one bug in uh, New Vegas where I went to the hotel in Prim and I tried to hack one of the computers and it just won't show the screen. Like it will play the noise that I'm trying to hack it. <laughs> tap, 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 yeah. tap, tap, tap. And then I'm saying, okay, well, I'm going to move on. That's the only one I've had so far, but I'm really cool. liking the writing in that game and the, the uh, quests are really cool. And the factions are awesome. Um, yeah. I, I love, I think I, w- I was Skyping you earlier. There's been two moments so far where I've been playing and I've run into various factions and they've given me quests that, that, I could tell will impact me with other factions. 
and I've I've had I've paused the game and quit and kind of gone to do something else to think about. Okay, what is this faction all about? Do I want to be aligned with them? Do I want to help them? What will it do to the other ones? And I'm going to be really interested to see how all that plays out because it sounds like a lot of it will come to a head at some point. Um, so I don't know. I'm just really really enjoying it so far. Yeah, that's and this for for somebody who's completely ignorant <coughs> to this, it's I, it is a brand new game. It is not an expansion, correct? Correct. It's using the same engine, but it's it's mm-hmm. a it's a brand new game. It's set on the other, you know other side of the country. It's mm-hmm. not any from what I can tell. There's no continuation from Fallout Three. You're, right, brand, I think, you're a brand new character. I think they've even said like the the expanse of the game, the actual physical size of the world that you're going to explore in it is the same as for what it was in Fallout Three. Um, really. Yeah, it's it's just as big as of a game as what Fallout Three was, and with a completely different storyline. Uh, and that's what I, I mean. Constantly, you will read online in reviews that if you liked Fallout Three, you will like mm-hmm. this because it's just more of that. Mm-hmm. Nice. It's kind of just more of that, but it's not. It's not the same. It's completely different because the story is completely different. And so far, I've I agree with Jason. I have really dug the story so far. And granted, I'm only a couple hours in, but just the 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 story in Fallout Three, and I hope it doesn't come to this in New Vegas. The story in Fallout Three really grabbed me at first, and then eventually, kind of like it, I was just off doing things until I decided, okay, yeah, I'm just gonna focus on the story and see actually what was going on and try to get back on track in that. Um, and I don't know if that's going to happen in Fall of Vegas, but it's so far I've been very captivated by the story. Hmm. But I, I'm also kind of worried because I also thought I went through Fallout 3 kind of quick because I went back to the story so soon and I didn't experience a lot of things. Like I, I read things online all the time about uh, things that happened in the game that I was like, well, shit, I never experienced that. Because I didn't go and explore and see it, and I hope I want to explore more in New Vegas. But again, I think it might be I may end up getting too captivated with the story. So, <laughs> and aren't you planning on doing a special sort of uh, writing thing for it too? Yeah, I've been doing the the journal entry, like from my character's perspective, which I am. Uh, Wondering if that's going to actually turn out to be such a great idea because there is a story involved in it. I'm trying to keep it as very – like his entries as vague as possible and not actually talk about mm. – uh, I want to talk about things in the story like what I see but not like assume things because I don't – there's a lot of things like in the beginning of the game, you really don't know a lot about your character. So I'm like – I'm not trying to put in my own – thoughts behind the character so much because I don't want to like eventually run into something that totally changes well what I said back then makes no sense now <laughs> so I don't know something for, for kicks I, I've been wanting to do something like that for a while and this I thought this was a good game to do and then mm-hmm. cool yeah no. so I've been playing that continue to play that other than that I've been playing uh, mag still um, I don't know if we talked about it on that podcast too much. You, I think we talked about it right before we had played it when you when you came out, and uh, I know you played it here and went home and and bought it too. Right. Yeah. We didn't. We you talked about it a bit on the show when I was up at your place, um, but I had not played it yet. Right. And then we, I played it before I left, and we haven't talked about it on the show since. So I don't, the more I play with the move, it, it was definitely like I said, tricky to learn. But I am I am loving the control style in it using the move, and I right. I, I can see people would stick with the controller, and I'm I'm by no means am I saying am I dominating people, and feel that I I am just in, indestructible with it. But I love the way it feels, and uh, I I've been playing a ton of it. Now uh, d- d- a quick question, Jason does the does the control do you feel that you're better with the actual move control than you are with the controller itself? Well, I suck overall anyway. At, at <laughs> so, like I said, I, I, I I'm not, I, I'm not significantly better. And at first, mm-hmm. I probably would have done better with a controller, but it feels more natural to me. And I, there's been those moments where I, I zoom in on somebody, and it's just it dead nuts. I got them, and I, and it's an awesome feeling. There's, <laughs> I'm still fighting a little bit with, which a, a lot less now, of thinking about the controls too much or. When, when I get into a hectic situation, overcompensating for the situation, mm-hmm. which I still do a little bit of, but but I'm getting a lot, lot better. And I think the big part of it is I'm thinking about if I can really 
master this, what this will mean for my enjoyment of, of Mag or Killzone, which I'm hoping to get in the beta, or the upcoming shooters on a console, I think that's the big draw to me. And the last few games I've played, I, I've noticed as I got done, like, I didn't even think I was playing in with the move. Like, I didn't think about the controller versus that. And I think that says a lot about my enjoyment of it. Just a very natural kind of second nature. Yeah, after a while. Not at first, but okay. after a while, yeah. Yeah, I I had kind of a weird experience because I had played it at your place after the podcast and really actually dug the way it felt with the move controller uh, as a first-person shooter. It definitely got me interested in the move overall and just the idea, okay, this might actually be the 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 um the thing that I need to get me into playing first person shooters on a console and then when I came back home actually I think it was the next day I we went out and I actually bought the move stuff uh the games actually and then it turns out nobody in town had move controllers uh so you you were actually kind enough to send me one of yours so that I could play um oh you know, well, isn't that sweet of him yeah uh, I'm but a sweetheart. It, yeah. In, <laughs> in the meantime, though, I actually, since I had bought Mag and I had bought the other games that I couldn't play without the move controllers, but since I had Mag and I had that itch from just playing it, I wanted to try it out with the actual standard controller versus just coming off of playing the move controller. This is where shit got real bizarre and it really <laughs> bum, bummed me out. Uh, because while I was at Jason's house playing, uh, I think the best match that I had was probably like a five kills, four deaths. And I, I, Jason played more of the medic type, staying back and healing people. And you get a shitload more points for doing that than you do being the assault guy, unless you're really good at assault. But I, I like shooting people. I'm, that's sorry. Uh, so I played more of the assault guy. So I. I, like I said, I think my best match is probably like five five kills, four deaths. I come home and I pop the game in. First match that I play with a standard controller, I think I did six kills, three deaths. And then the second match that I played, I did like 11 kills, two deaths. Hmm. Yeah. And I was like, oh shit. I was like, this is, I just, it felt a little bit better with the controller. And I was like, well, what the fuck? I was like, maybe I just need to give the move controller more time. And uh, I got the one in the mail from Jason, started playing it some more. Uh, right away, I was like, not very happy with, <laughs> I was not happy with it. I was like, oh shit, this is way more of a learning curve than I expected it to be coming off of that standard controller. And it's seriously, it is a huge learning curve, but I played it like for the rest of the week. I actually got very discouraged about it. I was telling Jason uh, messages on Skype and stuff. I was like, man, I, this is so much harder with that. But you were like really determined to keep trying it and not go to the regular controller, regardless of, even if you thought that it would be better to go to the regular controller route. Uh, but I stuck with it for like a week or so, and it it eventually just started clicking that uh, kind of what you were just saying. It's such a different new way of playing the game, and it makes it very interesting. I, f I think if I was just playing Mag with the regular controller, I wouldn't be playing Mag. Yeah, exactly. But because of the move controller, because I'm not a big console first-person shooter guy the move controller makes it very interesting and intriguing to me. So I keep going back and playing it and I am getting better at it. I am actually getting better at it. It's just, it is a huge learning curve and you really have to get used to the feel that that brings. It's a completely different feel. Really? When I, when I played first person shooters on the Wii, <clears throat> you know, you, you typically aim with the Wii mode at the screen with your right hand. You have the nunchuck mm -hmm. in the left hand. Is it the same sort of thing? I mean, cause that, was, that felt really natural for me because it felt like, you know, the right hand's a mouse pointer, the left hand is your strafe and movement key. Yep. It is. Um, but uh, on the Wii, I'm not sure if it's probably the same way, but on the Wii, if you need to turn, do you have to kind of point the Wii mode off the side? Yeah, yeah, okay. usually. It's, so it's kind of the same thing. I've never played any shooters on the Wii. Okay. But it, yeah, it's that same idea. But And it, it just is such a kind of a massive, fast-paced game like Mag. It, part, it feels like this weird mixed thing between playing with a mouse and keyboard and playing with a standard controller. <laughs> that you're kind of looking around with the move controller like you would a mouse but you're still moving around like you have a controller in your hand. So it's this weird hybrid 
of a gameplay type, but it, it's very intriguing to me. And again, like with stuff like Killzone 3 coming out that's going to have that support, there's no way in hell I would have bought Killzone 3. But I want Killzone 3 now because of the move. <laughs> yep, Intriguing. But other other than Mag, have you been playing anything else, Jason? Um, not not really. War, Mag, and uh, yeah. Um, I will have to so we don't totally get off of uh, move and then come back to it. I will say though that today, as my just today, I actually went to the stop by the store and uh, they had move controllers in stock. So I picked my two up. Uh, came home and played a little bit of the sports champions with two controllers. Oh, mm. yeah. Did you like a lot better with two? The um, only one that I've played so far is the uh, the Gladiator one. Mm-hmm. And I liked the Gladiator before with the one controller. I thought it was very interesting. I, I really want to see something like that taken out of that game and made a lot more in-depth. And then I played it with two controllers, and I'm fucking addicted to it yeah, now. It's, it's, so, it's so much more immersive that way. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was amazing. It was. It's. I don't know. I, I'm sure there's something maybe similar to the, on the Wii, but that I've never played. But it is fucking amazing. No, I think the only. Well, I guess the only thing that would be somewhat similar would be the Wii Sports Resort with the sword fight. But you no. can't. But you can't hold one in the second hand. Right. And the whole mechanic of holding your shield in your left hand and. Uh, the funny part was the, uh, holding your shield in the left hand, holding your weapon in your right, and being able to block and dodge out of the way and swing at, at different points on the other person. It was funny because I was I noticed I was getting so into it that I was moving towards the TV Uh-oh. so close that I was like out of the range of the camera. So I had to back back up and then like it, uh, it was it was that like I don't know I was that immersive I was getting into it that much and I I'm not a huge proponent of motion controls but I this was like one of the moments I was like oh my god I, <laughs> this is awesome and you're talking two of the balls right two of the ball yeah. controllers the yeah. one okay okay and it's funny because the day that the move came out I was still on the fence and I was kind of leaning towards buying it after talking to John and stuff and mm-hmm. I was only going to get one of those wands and I was reading the review of of Sports Champions and when they said yeah, you can hold two for some of them like like the Gladiator and once your shield I was just like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm that's awesome I'm I that I, a lot of I haven't played any of the other ones with two hands and I think the only ones that you can play other than that is Volleyball. the ar- archery yeah, archery, volleyball, and I think I think that might be it. And the glider, yeah. So there's not a lot of stuff in there that you can actually play it with too, but it's man, it was worth the price of admission just to be playing that. I'm I'm totally psyched about that. I I I think I sent you what I what a game that I would love to see take that and use the move is something like Demon Souls. Oh, like perfect fit. For yeah, that. like something third person, like sword and board, dungeon crawler. That I mean, sorcery is going to do that, but more along the magic route. But something with that gladiator feel, but more. I want something exactly like that, which is with depth, with like leveling up a character and getting new weapons and having the weapons actually uh, their reach actually matter how far mm-hmm. you're hitting and stuff. I, that's what I want. That's what I really want. So hopefully, I think it's an inevitability, but I think it's probably going to take forever for somebody to actually put it into place and be good. So, but yeah. Uh, other than that, on the move, I have not played anything else other than Magnet. Well, I can't say that I've been playing the iPad thing. Oh, how is that? It uh, just added- my God, uh. I, uh, my daughter, <laughs> my daughter. I have never heard my daughter laugh so hard in her life. <laughs> Oh god, the cackles out of that girl's ma- mouth is just—it's insane. The cackles. Insane. The cackles. Uh, it's oh, it's great. Cackles. It's it's one of the yeah cackles. I love cackles. Uh, it's one of the best things I've ever experienced with her because she's she plays some games, but mostly uh, I just play for her because she's at that like weird stage that she she's starting to get the mechanics. She's actually better playing on like a PC with a mouse on like flash games and stuff and then she then she is on like a controller cuz controllers are still a little bit big for her. She's 4 um just about to be 5 in a couple months, but uh she's starting to play the iPad stuff 
and I'm kind of just I'm not doing it for her. I'm kind of telling her you hit this now you got to hit this and you got to point and hit this, and she's getting in a lot more and she's playing with that and just uh, the laughter from that room when she plays is just great. So yeah, yeah my son loves it. Uh, did just she, started did she to, name it. Does it have a name? Yeah, yeah. Can name it. She named it Trio for some reason. Trio, nice. I like it. That's yeah. nice. My son named his Rolly. Rolly, yeah. cute. Nice. Well, she said yeah. she said a couple unspellable things that just she blurted out, just like stupid shit. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> like I was like, how do you spell that? And it wasn't like she'd say something with like that sounds like it sounds like it starts with a P. Like, what? How do you spell that? Uh, it's M. <laughs> uh, then she's just like random letters come out. I was like, no, okay. Well, how about we something simple, something small? <laughs> and then she came up with a trio. I was like, well, I can spell that. Okay, nice. But it's all pink. The iPad is all pink because she is such a fucking girly girl. But anyways, uh, what have you been playing, Dean? <laughs> I have been playing... Actually, you know what? I, I, I've been doing some thinking, and I actually have been playing a lot of stuff. Um, my main thing currently has been EQ2. I'm up to level... Let's see, I think level 51 um, the other night on my Illusionist. And it, actually, Winnen and I have been playing together quite a bit we've been doing a lot of the halloween events and things like that and the halloween events in eq2 are pretty awesome there's like a hedge maze and a bunch of costumes you can craft and you know drops for mobs um for costume pieces stuff like that so that's pretty cool um other than that i've actually uh and this is this is old news so i'll I'll pass over it quickly but um i've also been playing a lot of minecraft (laughs) oh yeah yeah um so with and 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 I I saw it like I don't know a long time ago on TIG Source when the guy first started developing it, but it really didn't catch my eye. And then everybody started talking about it, so I'm like, okay, I gotta check this out. So uh, I downloaded that, I played it, and I lost. I think last Sunday I lost about five or six hours of my life to my, to <laughs> Minecraft <laughs> oh, before yeah. I knew it. It was like eleven o'clock at night, and I'm all okay. I gotta go to bed, but. I really want to play this again. So I actually, what I did is I, I have a, a a box in my living room that kind of serves as just like a, kind of like a media center a hobby box. And I put a little Minecraft server on there after I bought the game. And so I've been playing that with a friend fairly regularly. And we've, we've actually built a little settlement and kind of got some stuff going there. So it's, it's fun. The game is fun. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> Like I am super shocked, but the main event for me because my um, my iPod Touch has been busted. It was actually um, at Apple for several weeks. I've been playing a ton of Professor Layton um, and the Unwound Future. Oh, okay, really? Yeah, um, it's it's. If anybody's ever played a Professor Layton game, it's kind of along the lines of all the other ones. You and you know this little kid named Luke. Um, go around solving mysteries and <coughs> solving puzzles. Do you hate that kid because you said that with a lot of disdain. <laughs> Professor, <Yeah>. yeah. <laughs> Luke. goddamn kid. Actually, he's less annoying in this one than he has been in the other two. And and what's what's really nice about this one is actually it's actually a lot better than the other two Professor Layton games they've made. Some substantial improvements to like the memo system when you're when you're doing puzzles, they allow you to write on the screen to take notes and you know to try to figure things out and in the old games, they gave you one pen size and and that was it and and it was either like you can write on there and erase everything at once um or you can not write on there at all, but now they've given it like a more Microsoft paint kind of feel where you have a lot of different. Um, colors and and pen sizes and an actual eraser, um, so you can take notes and actually be more effective when you're solving the puzzles and stuff like that. So, um, other than that, they've they've also they've also ramped up the story. These games mess with your head. So basically, this game starts out with this big malfunctioning time machine, and then the prime minister of London gets swept away and disappears. Well, <laughs> through the through the course of the story, they they take you into the future. Ooh. But yeah, but I don't know if it's the real future or if they're just messing with me. Like if it's this big elaborate <laughs> like I can't tell because in the past games, you know, they're like, "Okay, we're going to present this big elaborate story to you, but then we're going to tear the curtain away and we're just going to f with your head." So Apparently, I'm 10 years in the future, but I'm not quite sure if we are or not. So, um, it's just a bunch it, of false fronts. 
I don't know what's going on. So, <laughs> but but they're completely messing with my head. But you just you know you go around, you solve puzzles, and um, you know, just progress through the storyline. I put I put about ten hours into this game, and it's still not over. And right now, I, I just kind of want to be done. I I'm rushing through <laughs> it, and I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I, yeah, I'm like, I want to know if I'm in the future or not. Just just get to the end and figure this shit out because this is driving me crazy. So, um, did, did you I, see the? Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was going to say, did you see the uh, the announcement of the new Professor Lighton game? Oh, I was just going to say that. What? Oh, were you? I stole it from you. Yeah. There's, There's a, another one? They're going to make one uh, with, it's a crossover. It's Professor Layton and Phoenix Wright. Oh, that sounds badass. The Phoenix, <laughs> Wright, <laughs> the Phoenix Wright games are pretty awesome. That's yeah, I've played, really. I played two of them. They're pretty cool. What, the Phoenix Wright ones? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, take that. Yeah, no, that that those are, those are a Objection. lot of fun. Objection. Yeah. 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 With funky anime hair. I got I got some got horribly the awkward writing at times. <laughs> it is pretty bad, but though they're fun, they're fun little adventure yeah, games. It's yeah. it's adventure games have seen a nice revival on that system. So, yeah. I mean, other other than that, uh, I, I plan on playing a whole hell of a lot more of Minecraft. It's just like you have to, you really have to uh, be careful with that game because. I don't know. It just it takes up so much time, and you just don't even notice how much time passes when you play it. Yeah. Um, problem that I kind of had with Minecraft and Civ Five. Uh, <laughs> I I, uh, I almost wrote something up about it. And I just never got around to it. But I, <laughs> that's because you were playing Minecraft and Civ Five. No, no. Actually, because I haven't played either of them in a couple weeks. I love them. And that is going to be the whole. Uh, the idea is that I, I've played both of those games, mm-hmm. and I loved them. They're probably two of the, the games of the year that stand out in my mind because, like with Civ Five, I mean, say what you will about it. If it's dumbed down or not, just that, uh, beside that point, uh, I've never liked a Civ Five game before, and I loved it. I attached to it a lot better. Minecraft was something completely new and different, and everybody's attaching to it, or seemingly everybody. Um, yeah. And I, it was fantastic, and I've got major things being built in that. And I just kind of dropped them both because it's like, if I don't stop playing these games, I'm never <laughs> going to play any of these other games that I want to play. Like, I'm never going to shower again if I keep on playing. Yeah, it's like I'm. there were so many other games like coming down the pike that, I mean, Fallout, I knew Fallout was coming. I've been playing more. Uh, I w- I know. Well, fucking Gran Turismo Five was supposed to be coming soon. Uh-huh. Yeah, I read fuck. that and I was like, Steve's probably so pissed. Was, <laughs> hey, holiday was, season. I'm sure it'll be out this year. <laughs> <laughs> I was so irate. Uh, and then like Force Unleashed Two, I'm now debating getting next week. And uh, there's so much stuff that I want to play. And if I don't stop playing Minecraft and Civ Five. And that, but but on a more serious note, they just seem like for the time that I was putting into those games, mm-hmm. I was getting – I should be get, I uh, I should not – not should – that I would be getting a lot more rounded, satisfying experience if I would put that time into a different game. Yeah. And that's a, val- that's a totally valid point. Yeah, I mean, uh, they're, they're great things. And like Minecraft is fantastic because you can sit there and craft this thing and say, ha, ha, I built that and – Puff your chest out and look at your chest hair. Uh, well, unless you're May or like Heather. Heather. Hey, you, hey, you don't know. I, I don't know. She, actually, she. I, I just saw the pictures the other day of her clipping her hair for uh, Locks for Love. Maybe she I put it on her chest first. That, but anyways, that might be chest hair. You don't really know. <laughs> oh God, dear uh, Lord, Heather. Heather's gonna kill us. I know. She's not here though. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, just... She's she's in Florida. Yeah. Uh, She's in Florida, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's there was great things about those games, but I just felt like I was better off putting that time elsewhere. But yeah, it's it's rough. I'm trying my best to to not get addicted. Um, Heather just keeps she keeps on saying, "Yeah, come and join us on Blue Case Server," and I'm like, "No, I can't. I can't dedicate this much time to a game. I'm gonna. I, I need. I have a life to live and other games I'm to try, play. I'm trying to live in a society. <laughs> yeah." <laughs> Like I'm trying to be part of humanity. Like, yeah, I have to make a paycheck. Exactly. So, yeah, it's it's it's. Uh, I understand your predicament. Yeah, but oh, I'm sure I'll go back and visit them quite often. Yeah. Have you been playing <laughs> anything else, Dean? Uh, other than those three things, uh, no, I haven't actually. Right. 
Well, uh, now's about the time. We're going to get into our interview with Andy uh, from Bioware Mythic. Enjoy. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest on the show. With us is Andy Belford from Bioware Mythic. How you doing, Andy? I am doing awesome. How are you guys doing tonight? Not too bad. Uh, other than Andy with us, we have Jason. Hello. And it's me, Steve. Uh, sitting down with Andy for a little bit to talk about uh, a little bit about himself and about Warhammer Online and uh, what's going on in the game. Uh, evidently, the last podcast that aired, I really butchered some information with uh, what was coming up in the game because, uh, yeah, because I'm horrible. So we brought Andy on to clarify the situation and see how the PTS uh, tests are going and all that. So uh, let's start off before we get into War Talk. I want to talk a little bit about. Uh, Andy Belford himself. Uh, how long now have you been with Bioware Mythic? Uh, about a little over two years now. Two years, awesome. What what were you doing before you were with Mythic? Uh, before I was with Bioware Mythic, I was actually working with well, then EA Mythic and er, an Electronic Arts studio, and then prior to that, it was a uh, uh, Mythic Entertainment, and then back to Mythic Entertainment, and now we're Bioware Mythic. So, anyways, <laughs> um, it's been a been a long road. Uh, Listen, I've been here for change your business years. cards a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> um, uh, before this, I was actually working at a uh, working at a cell phone company in the engineering department. Oh, really? Yes, yes. Oh, cool. I've uh, I've had a very uh, different uh, path, I would say, to the gaming industry than a lot of people do. So, how did you make that transition? How'd that come about? Uh, well, it's it's an interesting story. Um, I was uh, myself and my friends were subjects of a gaming documentary called Second Skin. Uh, we were going around to all the different conventions, and uh, we were uh, um, uh, representing the game, base, the the game, representing the, uh, the the film actually at a bunch of different conventions. Uh, I actually uh, met my soon to be boss uh, at a gaming convention, um, and uh, struck up a conversation with him after he had seen the movie, and then. Uh, the rest, as they say, is history. Um, but you know, just so you guys don't think that I, you know, I just happened to stumble into this, uh, I actually spent about about a little over five years actually trying to to uh, break into the industry. So it was a uh, it was actually a lot of work aside from that. Trying, nice. to, oh, kind of trying leading to, up to that kind of chance meeting. It it all led up to it. That's awesome. Well, yeah, that's great, man. Uh, and you're loving what you're doing. I, so I assume, at least. I, I do. Um, you know, uh, <clears throat> I know. Uh, I know people. Uh, some people are a little critical of being in of the gaming industry itself. But you know, I mean, I am in my dream job. I, I've always wanted to be in this industry. I've always wanted to uh, to work for a studio, and and the the chance to actually um, work so closely with the players, the people who play the game, has just been a privilege and uh, an, an amazing experience. And I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Yeah, yeah those people. I'm really glad to hear that, but like a small part of me was hoping that you would say, "No, I hate this. I'm so screwed. Like, I don't, I don't know what I got myself into." Somebody, please send help. <laughs> they're, they're, they're monitoring me. He's hooked up to electrodes. Carrie uh, is actually standing behind me with a baseball bat right now, just ready to swing. No, I, I'm, you say I'm, good things. <laughs> I'm kidding. She's not right. right oh, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was okay she's, to say. She's nodding. Yes. <laughs> She's nodding yes, yes. <laughs> you tell me you tell them how great I am. No, Carrie is actually awesome. Uh you know, she's one of the one of the best producers I've had the the privilege to work with. Um uh I don't think I've uh, you know, you know, here admit that we've got a we've got a really good reputation of actually working with our community and talking to our players and I think Carrie just goes above and beyond that as far as uh it, taking input from the players uh even by mythic standards, which is, you know, as I said, pretty high. So yeah, it's awesome. Um, outside of uh, outside of your time in war, though, as far as gaming wise, what what's what are you hooked in right now? I think I think we've already found out from before the show that you're hooked into Minecraft. Uh, well, you know how uh, I think that there are several of us out there who are just wasting away hours at a time building anything and everything that we can. I think my current. Uh, my current pet project is a giant underwater city. Uh, I know a couple of the guys, a couple of the guys here in the studio have built uh, like pyramids that would rival the Great Pyramids of Giza, and 
uh, I'm just amazed at the ingenuity that some of these people have. Some so many minds that are far more creative than I. Just seeing yeah. some of the stuff. I saw one online the other day. It was uh, someone did a recreation of Rapture from Bioshock, and I was amazed. Yeah, that is that is pretty awesome. I saw that one, and then what was it? I saw the Starship Enterprise. Have you seen that yeah, one yet? Yeah. yeah. Full scale. Yeah. The full scale Starship Enterprise, and then somebody even built a, like a Klingon Bird of Prey too. Um, <laughs> Go figure Star Trek references for <laughs> for something like this, but yeah, no, it's 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 a very creative game. Aside from that, though, uh, I actually play a fair amount of Warhammer uh, online. Uh, I'm I've always been a really big PvP player. Uh, uh, prior to that, I did play you know other MMOs. Uh, I still play pretty much every MMO that comes out, just because you know I, I think it's important to experience all those things and you learn something from each game. Yeah. Uh, what else? Gosh, uh, first-person shooters is really where I got my my really hardcore start gaming. I did a lot of uh, uh, clan clan uh, uh, Counter Strike, uh, a lot of a uh, a lot of uh, Unreal Tournament. Uh, was very competitive with those things for quite a while. So yeah, nice. That's uh, first-person shooters is actually what got me into PC gaming. So yeah, I can uh, I can see where you're coming from on that. And Counter Strike was a huge addiction for a while for me. Yeah, I I really can't even fathom like I I don't think I could even come to 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 uh, to a an idea of how many hours I spent playing Dust. I oh jeez, I, I don't know if it's possible to actually calculate that many hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that does that's one of the new things about Steam that's kind of scary where it tracks all the hours that you play something and sometimes I don't want to know. Yeah, I try not to look at that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it, I find it's better for my uh, my my mental health and my 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 continued gaming habit if I don't actually look at how many hours yeah, I play. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or more importantly, it's better if my wife doesn't actually look at how many hours I play. Well, when I get when I see one that really shocks me, I just tell myself, "Well, I probably paused it," and or uh, you know, I was I went to other <laughs> stuff. Like that's not, how, that's not really how exactly. much of that was I in the bathroom for? Yeah. Exactly, and you know, and I was probably you know. AFK, you know, you know, uh, doing something. Absolutely, yeah. something, anything, keep, right? Just keep anything telling yourself that. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will, I will. <laughs> but you do spend a lot of time in war, though. Uh, I do. I think it's. Um, I actually think it's extremely important that uh, that people, especially if you're working in community, that you you have a a a close tie to the community. Um, I think that it's important that you have to maintain that. You have to maintain a certain degree of. Uh, of objectivity, uh, obviously, you don't want to. You don't want to necessarily go. Uh, uh, a, a wise man once told me, "You don't want to go native," um, because you do in in the community position have to represent the interests of both uh, the community that you represent and uh, of the studio. Um, so uh, we have to we have to look at things, uh, kind of step aside and step outside of our, uh, the the normal studio representative and step outside of you know the player representative and kind of put ourselves apart and actually under you know, have a very objective and um, clear view of, of what the things are that we're talking about and how they affect not just you know the game itself but the long term gotcha um, how much how much time would you say you actually spend playing war a week though oh geez I play uh, it depends on the week it depends if I'm traveling depends if I'm in, right but on average I would say I play at least five nights a week. Um, oh, cool. Anywhere from an hour to, you know, it depends if I'm really not able to sleep. <laughs> yeah. I, I play for five hours at a time, but that's usually like starting at about nine o'clock or, well, once the kids actually go to sleep and then yeah. uh, until yeah, sometimes two or three in the morning. Depends if there's a city raid, actually. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. See, my kids just went to sleep. That's why I'm doing this podcast. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, I'm actually having to do the podcast from work because if I was at home right now, my kids would be coming in and 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 talking to me every five seconds. So <laughs> yeah, we're we're actually very fortunate that my son, uh, I wore him out before doing the podcast, so he is knocked would have, out. Would you have him run laps? Something? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I got him all uh, cra- coked up and ran him around the block for a while. Uh, that's the way to do it. It's a little a little more difficult to do that for me. I've got two three year olds, so. Uh, they, they, the amount of energy that those two have far outpaces mine. I'm uh, bridge, I'm uh, bridging that year, uh, that year gap. I've got a two year old and a four year old. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I, I, you are, you are a, uh, you are a. I salute you, sir. <laughs> when you walk in the house, are you just like terrified? I'm Why not. not? <laughs> like 
I, I wouldn't be. I, I, I love it actually coming home and just seeing the, the kids run up and be like, daddy, daddy, daddy. You know, it's actually one of the, I think one of the great parts about being a parent. And I think the next great part is going to be, you know, when they have a, you know, they go to school and they, the, the kids are asked, what does your daddy do for, do for work? And <laughs> yeah. They can say, my daddy makes video games. Yes. How about yours? Yeah. You're gonna, <laughs> my dad yeah, makes. He, he's going to drag, they're going to drag you to all the meet the parent days. Or, or oh, yeah. 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 My dad makes games where people rip each other's heads off. <laughs> My dad wears jeans and T-shirts to work every day. <laughs> and here in the D.C. area, that's extremely rare. So. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, with, uh, with War, uh, going, back, going into that a little bit more in depth, uh, mm-hmm. the RVR pack's coming out. Uh, so just to clarify, everyone, I know a lot of listeners to our show uh, have played War. I think a lot of people that followed us uh, were back with Cotcast and have maybe left the game. Um, we're talking about it again. I know a few people have come back to the game with us. Um, but just explain to everybody that may not be playing War and might be interested in it, what's, what's involved in the uh, RVR packs that are coming up? Well, so the, 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 the idea is, is that we want to give our community some new content. Mm-hmm. Um, and we want to give it to them uh, with a focus on, uh, obviously, realm versus realm combat. Um, that's what we do. It's what we do best. It's why people play Bioware Mythic games, uh, because we are, we are RVR game makers. Um, and we embrace that, and we are doing everything that we can to deliver a very visceral RVR experience. Uh, you'll notice that pretty much all the content that's being added into the RVR pack is RVR-centric, uh, from everything to the uh, well, the the, uh, the the redesigned ORVR experience isn't necessarily part of the pack, but it's it's the same timeline. Um, but everything from the redesigned ORVR experience to um, the uh, to the new uh, Skaven uh, RVR dungeon, it's all RVR, mm-hmm. RVR. <laughs> no PV. Uh, not really. No, I mean uh, we we definitely appreciate that. There's a lot of people who uh, enjoy that play style. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we recognize that and we do have some PVE in our game, but, um, it's, it's not what we, uh, it's not what we want to deliver to our, uh, to our community right now. I mean, it's not, we, we, our community has spoken loud and clear to us that they want us, uh, to keep working on RVR. Yeah, it's it's definitely a big change from when we, because uh, I I was a I, I believe Jason was too a day one player, and like he's for example he's been playing his uh, disciple of Cain recently, and what what's your realm renown rank on there? Oh, it, when I started it was, it was seventeen. My yeah, yeah. forty disciple of Cain. And that was because you went through the game primarily through PVE because back then that was the best way to level. Did did you go through Land of the Dead? Did did you did you do that? No, I did not. Oh, okay. No, I'm saying like this was a this I got this character to 40 before Land of the Dead came out, and oh, I, okay. I just never played him after I, I went to other characters and things, and I just like I you know I had the itch to play this and realized just how paltry I how how little RVR I had done that first time. Right. It's it's just a huge uh, there a huge difference difference in the game right now. Like if you come to the game now, it, you can just feel that it's a lot more RVR focused and. The PVE almost seems like an afterthought at this point, where it was very muddied back in the past, and I, I like the direction that the game is going now. You know, uh, we're the first to admit that we made we made some uh, we made some missteps in the early in the development of the game, or at least uh, early after launch. Um, and everything that we've been doing for the last uh, you know eighteen months has been, you know, just honing in with a laser on on. On the things that we know are the strong suits of our game, which is you know massive uh, RVR and ca- RVR experiences, huge battles, um, and, and you know that like I said earlier, that very visceral, uh, fast-paced adrenaline pumping feeling that you get when you're doing uh, open RVR and, and scenarios in Warhammer Online. So, right. well, my favorite part of that is every, every time I log in, you, you have no idea what's going to happen. It's not the same old routine. It's not the same. And I've never been a big PVE MMO guy. I mean. My all-time favorite MMO was was DAOC, and to, and to kind of see this go in, in a type of direction where it's more focused on that is is great, and just makes me want to log in as much as I can because I have no idea what the night's gonna have in store for me. Yeah, well, you know, we take a lot of uh, we take a lot of inspiration from Dark Age, um, from Camelot. We 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 
we look at you know all the things that we learned from making and maintaining that game, and that we still are learning every day from from making and maintaining game the game because you know Camelot is still there. Uh, it is it is alive and well. The Wayne server is 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 thriving with activity. Um, we've got a, a great uh, great community of players who continue to support the game to this day. Um, uh, thank you, by the way, guys. Uh, <laughs> but but we do we do want to make sure that you know people understand. It's like there is Dark Age Camelot, and there is Warhammer Online. You know, uh, while there may be some similarities between the two, they are two completely different experiences. Um, and that's and that's okay. That's good. I mean, uh, Dark Age of Camelot. Uh, there, not everybody. Not every. It's not for everybody. I, I think that everybody can agree with that, that. That you know, not everybody likes the more sandboxy kind of open, you know, open world, huge, huge world experience like that. Some people want like the more kind of fast paced and uh, and. I don't want to say segmented, but but different experience that Warhammer has. I I mean, as far as segmented, if you want to call it that, uh, the experience of Warhammer is speaking of like uh, us having children. It's it's a lot more perfect of an MMO f- for who I am right now, uh, guy in his thirties that has two kids and limited playtime. It's a lot easier for me to actually jump on and see something happening, like what Jason said. You never know what's going to go on, but there's something happening every night and it's been fantastic with this more recent return that I've had with the game. It's been fantastic being able to jump on every night and play. Yeah. And that's, that's definitely one of the strong suits of, uh, of Warhammer online is that we have, um, we're, we're very, it's very accessible. Uh, you know, like you said, you know, you're, I'm right there with you as far as being a parent and, you know, being, uh, being, being in a different place in my life than I was, you know, uh, seven, seven, eight years ago, when I was playing, uh, playing things like you know, like WoW, and playing things like EQ and Save Heroes for like seven or eight hours at a time, I'm in a yeah. much different place in my life. And uh, you know, the, the older you get, the the more responsibilities that you have, the the more be- gaming tends to take a kind of a backseat in your life. And and you want to still be able to experience those things and and still feel like you know you're 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 able to be part of that community. And I, I think that we feel a very important uh, part of that. Cool. Um, but with the RVR pack and the PTS stuff that's going on, what, what's the uh, PTS test that was going on today? Well, today was uh, take two of our uh, uh, new Skaven Dungeon Thankwells Incursion, incursion testing. Uh, that was we uh, hosted our test earlier in the day today. Uh, we, as you may know, we are now uh, also responsible for our European community. Um, mm-hmm. And so we host uh, our PTS events. Uh, we do do them at different times. Uh, today was the European day, so we did it a little bit earlier. Uh, and we just uh, basically turned people loose on the new dungeon and said, you know, go have fun, test it, give us some feedback, which I've actually got to post that feedback thread here in a little bit. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, uh, the one thing I, I love about reading about the Thankful editions is how – some of the characters in the lore, it's always been kind of my thing with Warhammer, is I want them more actively involved in some of the RVR type stuff or, or you know, PvE or anything. And it's great to see. He's one of my favorite characters from, from the Warhammer books. To see him implemented like that is pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I think that anybody who's a big Warhammer uh, hobbyist, uh, um, as Games Workshop likes to say, is they, they've... They've read, you know, the Felix and Gotrick series. They they've followed those characters within it, and Thankful the Gray Seer and Bone Ripper, his his massively disgusting construct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, uh, if you've read the army books, you know you know about Throth the Unclean, um, and and even you know even not so much even the characters, but you know about the different roles, and and that's part of the Warhammer universe is that there are just there's just so much variety, and there's so many things to do, and people just. People love that, and, and and they want to see all of that in the game, and so do we. Yes, <laughs> definitely. So do. much stuff, though. Yeah, there there is definitely so much. You know, on, on the one hand, we get super excited about about adding new things to the game that 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 lend from that take itself from the Warhammer lore. On the other hand, you know, we we recognize the the responsibility that we have to develop in a responsible manner and not kind of go too far overboard with adding new things all the time. So. Sure, yeah. Um, with the what's next on the PTS test? What's oh, what's upcoming? So upcoming, we have got some more and we've got some more open RVR testing. Uh, we kind of took a break from that. 
with the uh, the, the new Skaven dungeon testing. Mm-hmm. But uh, we're going to jump right back into that uh, after probably this week and or sometime next week. We'll be jumping back into that, and and really what we're at the point we're at now is what we need to do is uh, focus on the total experience, how everything just ties together, um, how how the dungeon ties together with uh, with the open RVR campaign, um, how the flow of that and the timing of that and everything goes with that. So it, it's going to be a uh, it's going to be kind of a some some longer, more involved test. We're calling it end to end testing uh, of gotcha. the, the new stuff. Um, the the new open RVR stuff. I think I understand it, but just to clarify, can you real quick rundown of how that how that's actually changing uh, the the tiered experience? Sure. Well, uh, the tiered experience itself is not changing. Um, that's that is still remaining uh, part of the experience. Okay. We don't. Um, Part of being responsible with game development is that you don't want to change too much at one time. Um, I'm not going to refer to anything specific NGE, but um, I, I think that everybody agrees that too much radical change at once can be very off-putting and can ultimately uh, hurt a community and, and, mm-hmm. and ultimately does not do the right things that you want. It doesn't accomplish the things you want to accomplish. Um, so what we're looking at right now is we're looking at um, improving the actual ORVR uh, lake, the, the the experience in an individual lake. Okay. Um, so we've taken you know um, a, a large amount of feedback from our community, and we understand that you guys that, that you guys don't don't like domination timers. You don't like you know the victory point system, and 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 you don't like things like weight hammer and RV door and <laughs> and, and all those things that we hear on a daily basis. Uh, people that, are so that, clever. <laughs> yeah, RV door. Yeah, it's but it's true. I mean, I, I like I told you earlier. I play the game. I mean, I'm I'm there, uh, and you know, let me tell you, it's tons of fun just running up and beating a door down. That's yep. uh, yeah. you know, that's that's it's actually no, it's not. It's not fun at all. <laughs> um, you know, so what we've done is we we want to deliver an, an experience that is uh, that is dynamic, um, and that it has the the possibility of being different every time. Um, we want something that's going to encourage active play rather than standing on a bo and waiting for a timer to count down. Um, we want to uh, we want to make things like siege weaponry uh, uh, important. We want you to want uh, want to uh, defend your keep, um, and so we've done that. Uh, we we've made it so that the 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 campaign is simplified quite a bit as far as like you know victory. Uh, victory conditions, you know, now no longer do you have to actually like, you know, get a certain amount of points to win a zone and, and uh, you don't have to, you don't have to, or, you know, if there's not enough people there, you don't have to rely on scenarios to, to, to win the zone. It's, you know, we, we've simplified it. It's now, it, you have a keep, your enemy has a keep, uh, and, and whoever takes the other enemy's keep wins. Um, cool. It, obviously, I make that a little bit oversimplified sounding. Yeah, probably. yeah, because I think the podcast will probably be an hour long if you had explained everything. So, <laughs> yeah, there, there's a lot of working parts there. I, I will, I, I can say that much. I mean, there's a whole lot of working parts there uh, included in all that. Right. But, but the the bottom line is, is that we've gotten rid of the things that were just frustrating to to our players about the ORVR experience. The one uh, one question that I had, I think I was I. Th- Believe that you had said that it's across different tiers, but is it? Is are the changes going to be tier four only, or are they t- tier three, nope. two, tier two and three? And uh, we have not yet announced what we're doing with tier one. Um, so yeah, but yes, it's going to be uh, tiers two, two, three, and four. Okay, or are, are they going to have the same system with the resource system and all that? Yes, uh, you know, BO is generating resources, blah 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 blah. Okay. And- Aerial bombers! Yay! Yes. <laughs> Since um, I know that was such a successful part of our uh, podcast. <laughs> yeah. uh, I also like the uh, idea of the mobile siege weaponry. So. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's actually really cool. I mean, it's not the the exact same as a uh, as what people experienced in Camelot, mm-hmm. but it is still you know it's still the same idea. You have siege weaponry that you can deploy at any place on the field of battle. I don't think I really wanted it the way Camelot was, though, because he always had to have a tank carry all the material. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, encumbrance systems. Yeah, that was great. 
we got to buff the tank. Uh, but yeah, it does. I am very excited about the changes. But you, there, okay, there are going to be changes to tier one as well, but just not announced yet. Uh, is there any? I mean, after this, okay, I guess a question: Are the changes to tier one going to be in this RVR pack? I believe so. Uh, okay. I don't have the schedule for for what's going on in front of me, but I believe we are, we have planned implementation for for all of it. I mean, tier one because it, it hosts our uh, our endless trial. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it is kind of a primer for how the rest of the game works. So I think people, it's important that people need to kind of get an idea for right. you know how the rest of the game is going to work if you know, it, it, when you decide to uh, to subscribe from the endless trial. Right. Um, I know Shannon's not here. Uh, she couldn't make it tonight, but she had a question actually regarding tier one uh, with trial accounts. Speaking of trial accounts, uh, mm-hmm. has has there been any talk of maybe allowing people to lock characters into tier one, like paying subscribers instead of having to make a secondary account for you tier mean, one? You mean XP off? Yeah. Uh, we've talked about it. Um, I don't know that that's uh, that's necessarily the best solution for 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 the health of the game. Okay. Um, we're we're not uh, we're not we're not completely and totally ruling it out, but we're not like super excited. Yay, go ventures ventures on this. You know, it's it's more of a what a, it's one of those things that we would kind of want to approach with a lot of caution um, and right. a lot of a lot of uh, contemplation before pulling the trigger on it. And, and the reason is is because uh, you don't want to create a create the environment i mean twink twinking as you as you may or may not know was was oh, yeah. kind of an issue amongst <laughs> the trial players um still is to a certain extent and and we have things in the work to action works to actually uh, uh rid the world of uh, rid our world of twinkers okay. um i i, I don't i don't want to say that that's the 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 actual thing that we want to do mm-hmm. uh, but you know, maybe something along those lines, but that's about all I can say right now. Okay. Um, but going along with the tier one talk, uh, even though most people that are listening to this that do play the game probably don't care. Uh, but another question that I had, if w- with all the changes that are going to happen with uh, 1.4 and the RVR packs, uh, do you guys foresee at all that the uh, the f- tier four becomes like super populated. Do you have any concern of like new people coming into tier one? Like it's empty. Uh, no, I mean, I, the the endless trial has has been very successful. I mean, we have uh, hundreds of thousands of people who who have gone through the endless trial and who continue to go through the endless okay. trial every week. Um, it's been a very successful feature, and it's been great for the the health of the game as far as in tier one goes because. You know, basically, it ensures that our p- paying subscribers, you know, always have people to fight against. Yeah. So, right. I mean, it's it's accomplished two things. It's gotten people kind of uh, to experience that first initial, you know, that first hit is free thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and it's and it's and it's been good for our existing players. So basically, what you're saying is, buy more mythic card drug dealers. <sighs> you got us. <laughs> um, <laughs> ah! The you recently had the uh, the reenlisters campaign. Oh yes, go through. Uh, did that? I was just had a personal question. Did that go well? How did that actually turn out for you guys? Yeah, it went pretty well. We had we, we you know we've actually um, you know even prior to the reenlisters, uh, we've we've seen a lot. Uh, uh, we've seen a lot of uh, players coming back to to war, um, and and really to all of our games. Uh, you know, Ultima Online is still going strong. Just released a, a booster pack of their own. Um, Dark Age of Camelot, like I said earlier, is still really alive, well, and kicking. Right. Um, but Warhammer Online, especially, I mean, we've had we've had a lot of people, a lot of kind of old faces returning to the community, and a lot of people coming back. So um, this just kind of added to it and, and gave you know even more incentive. You know, who, who doesn't want to play a, an MMO? Uh, you know, where you've got time invested and and uh, you've got you've got an attachment to that community for for free for fifteen days. Yeah, you know, yeah. that came. It kind of like you were saying. I had come back right before that went into effect and my wife was kind of on the fence and as soon as that campaign went live she's like okay i'm gonna come so yeah it's kind of funny how that worked out yeah, yeah. i mean it, yeah and we're, we're we're glad to welcome everybody back in fact you know now's a great time to come back because uh you can get yourself ready for the uh get yourself ready for the rvr pack get yourself geared up spend a little time get, you yeah know. there's there's a there's a like 
electricity about the game right now. And I'm very happy that I had come back when I did because, like, what you're what the Rain Lusters campaign kicked off and the RVR pack talk started, and it's just it's really got me revitalized about being in the game. It's a very very happy time. You know, I, I think a, a, a lot of that is actually just due to the community itself. Uh, yeah. you know, Warhammer Online really has one of the best communities, uh, if not the best community that I've ever had the privilege to be a part of. Um, uh, from everything from our bloggers to our forum posters who, you know, can be, can be a little aggressive at times. But for the most part, uh, you know, you can, just, you can tell how much they actually care about the, the game and how much they want it to, to succeed and, 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 and to be around for a long time. So, you know, we're right in line with them on that. Yeah, I'd say that uh, as far as bloggers go, it's probably the largest group of people that actually give constructive criticism rather than just criticism. Uh, you know, uh, all, I'm, I'm of the firm belief that all criticism is, uh, is constructive in one way, shape, or form. Uh, unless I have to edit it on the forums, and well, <laughs> <laughs> and that guy was just a douchebag. <laughs> then you're just making me work harder. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I one of the the early uh, early things that that you know in, in my, during my my first uh, months with with Warhammer that I was just amazed at was you know the the kind of early adoption uh, of the blogging community uh, with uh, you know. With guys, uh, with with some of the older bloggers that that have since m- maybe moved on to 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 a different to different things, uh, guys like you know uh, uh, Justin uh, Sip from BioBreak, right. um, you know uh, you until recently seeing you come back has been great, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and uh, some of the other some of the other guys uh, uh, who may remain nameless right now, but um, it's. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, not trying to be not trying to be overly cryptic with that. No, um, no, no. no. But uh, just seeing the, the the bloggers that we had then, and and just you know, doing the, the 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 few things that we've done to to encourage that community and and to help grow that community, and then just watching everybody like all the new blogs, you know, constantly new blogs are popping up and and just and and starting to contribute. And these aren't just like fly by night; these are people who are actually sticking with with the blogging experience for Warhammer, and it's it's inspiring to see how people just stay with it, you know, and, and continue to share their, their everyday experiences in game. Mm-hmm. It's fantastic stuff. Yeah, you're saying the new people popping up, it amazes me, like reading uh, where it's blog or uh, Grimnir's blog, like every week they'll put somebody new, let's start a blogging about the game. It's just astonishing. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, whenever I do one of our uh, our blog rolls on the Herald, um, uh, our blog rolls, as I call them, <laughs> I've I feel actually very guilty when I say that because I I, I realize I'm turning into my father. But, uh, <laughs> you still got your sacrifice. pants on though, right? I, I do still have my okay. pants on. Um, You're not they, there I, yet. They haven't migrated above the hip level. Though, so <laughs> I'm still okay. Um, but uh, where was I? Oh yeah. So, but it, it amazes me when I go through those um, when I go through the, the and do those blog roll things that seeing how many blogs we have and and I don't even like I'm not even looking at the ones that are you know they've been inactive for you know two or three months or something I'm looking at all of uh, the ones that are active within the last like you know uh, 30 days basically and and it is amazing just how many we still have you know uh, as much as people like to say how much uh, how dead Warhammer is and and uh and like to uh, like to uh, prematurely, I would say, uh, uh, call, call you know because the popular thing to do is to bag on Warhammer. Uh, don't think oh, that we don't we don't know that. I mean, we we know we what we read, we we know what what people are saying. But you know what, our blogging community kind of says throw, throws that all out the window and just says, uh, you know what, we don't believe you. So <laughs> yeah, you got the uh, you have sub numbers and stuff to look at to tell you otherwise. We we definitely do, um, and more importantly, we have a, a healthy, vibrant, and and uh, and uh, a very active and involved community to tell us otherwise as well. Yep. Well, um, Jason, did you have any other questions? I, I just want to. What's what's your favorite class in war? You probably get this question a lot, but. I don't know. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I know that's a tricky thing to answer because then people always say, "Well, that will always get to love." But what's the one that you find yourself playing the most? You know, it's a, it's it's funny. Um, I actually have severe altaholism, altaholism. I don't know what, how you want to say well, it, but you got both. 
I, I <laughs> exactly. But yes, yes. My favorite class is yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, I actually I play so many different characters. I mean, I've got three characters uh, at renowned rank seventy, um, oh. seventy plus. I've got. Uh, I've got several characters above 50. I've got like another group of characters that were now ranked 60. Um, I, I play a lot. Uh, I, I will say that I'm not much of a not much of a healer player these days. I spent uh, I spent uh, four years or four and a half years of, of playing uh, World of Warcraft as a as a well not all of it as a healer but a decent amount of it as a healer. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't really I don't really uh, relish that experience anymore. But you know I've got basically like one of every dps okay so you're, you're kind of a dps player i am i am more of a dps player these days uh just because it's it's a lot easier to pew pew than to keep people alive i think oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty why I'm, why I'm playing a marauder i guess exactly. um that marauders are getting some uh, getting a lot of love next patch too so yeah i know i'm excited yeah they're gonna be scary scurry <laughs> uh, but the yeah the alcoholism is kind of funny because like as soon as I hit forty with the Marauder I was like man I kind of want to go play an engineer. Well you know yeah. I, I was talking I think we talked about one of the podcasts before one of the great things I love about Warhammer and I I, I think I more have alcoholism in this game is every game every uh, career is so unique and and I think really well defined that I I'll be playing one loving one I'll see someone do something with a character and I'm like you know I'm gonna go play that. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, it, it's it's funny. Uh, we we are actually moving more towards a closer mirror uh, with a lot of our uh, a lot of our career design choices these days, simply mm-hmm. because we we found that it's it's better actually for the long term health of the game to do that. But even even with having careers that are that are mirror ish of of each other, uh, closer mirrors, there is still just this really unique. Um, feel and flavor, so to speak, to, to each of the different careers. Um, a lot of that has to do with the, with the, the lore that we uh, we have access to. I mean, uh, Games Workshop has built this amazing world that they've given us to to uh, to to develop, and and the, the amount of the amount of variety and uh, and and just story behind everything in the in the world is is outstanding. I mean, it's a over twenty five year old IP. What can yeah. you say? Yeah, we get to mess with this. Thank that, you. That was, you know, it's funny that you say that because I've I've noticed I've done that a lot. I've, I've and when I was playing Order, I was reading the the Go Trick and Felix books a lot, and now that I'm playing my Doc, I'm kind of like I'm gonna go reread the Malice Darkblade books just because it it's that world and and you know being part of it and it really draws me in. It's funny. I actually just picked up uh, the Malice Darkblade books the other day, so I haven't I haven't they're, read them. Yet. They are pretty messed up, but they're good. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, he's he's pretty messed up. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah it's yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm actually a latecomer. I just started reading the first uh, Grotek, Go Trek and Felix Omnibus. So, oh, okay, yeah, those are those are obvious, you know, required reading for I, the the only Warhammer book that I actually have read uh, before this was Held and Hammer. That was the first one I ever read. Good book. The good it's thing pretty, about the I Go Trek. Go Trek and Felix ones, they kind of give you a wide range of, of races and things that mm-hmm. you get to see their point of view, and the, the, mm-hmm. I think that's a good introduction. Um, surprisingly, uh, I, I don't know if you've ever read the, the Time of Legends series, Mm-mm. which is uh, things like Nagash, um, Sigmar, yeah, uh, yeah, I've those heard stories. Of them. Yeah. They're actually really good. I, I highly recommend them for reading if anybody uh, is looking for a, for a good read. And I, I, when we were uh, developing Tomb Kings, I read the Naga- started reading the Nagash series, uh, the, Nag- the Nagash trilogy, and uh, it really gave me a, a good understanding and appreciation for uh, for that uh, for that story, for his story. Hmm. I might have to check that out after uh, I get done reading this thick thing. Absolutely, awesome. All right, I think that is uh, all we got. All right, thank you all very right. much. Yeah, thanks hey. a bunch for coming on, man. Thanks for the opportunity, guys. Uh, anytime, we are, we're we're big fans of yours here. So, oh really? Yeah, you lie. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have fans. I know, <laughs> I know who you are. <laughs> okay. Yeah, nobody listens to us. <laughs> you think That's people not- are going to hear this? You can say anything you want, man. <laughs> oh. Damn. <laughs> you wasted that opportunity. I did. I, I wasted a perfectly good opportunity. Oh, well. Well, gentlemen, 
No point in hanging around this dump any longer. Wait! Where are you going? I was gonna make espresso. Show's over, folks. You can't go. All the plants are gonna die. Take off, eh? Thanks for listening to Multiplying, the companion podcast at Multiplying.net. Questions, comments, feedback, errors, etc. can be sent to Multiplying at gmail.com. We invite you to write a review on iTunes and visit our website at www.multiplying.net. We've made a lot of friends, shared a lot of laughs, often at the expense of others. I think some people are going to be upset. Let me just close this conversation by saying you are one unique individual. Thank you and good night.